Hell. Now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. Well, good morning, everybody. It is 837 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. Brian Wilson and Tori Clark. And you may notice we're in a we're not in our studios. We're at the McLean Family Restaurant in McLean, part of our Swing State Road Show. We're going to be doing this every Friday between now and the election. So uh, we're very pleased to have with us in the house the former U.S. Senator from Tennessee, former GOP presidential candidate, and a well-known Hollywood actor, Senator Fred Thompson is with us. Senator Thompson, thank you for joining us here. Good to be with you. I'll start out by asking the obvious question. Did you see the debate last night, and what did you think about it? Yeah, well, welcome to uh, my hangout, by the yeah, way. You, uh, you live place. in this neighborhood, right? Yeah, I'm waiting on breakfast here in a, in a minute. But, uh, yeah, I watched it last night, and I must say that after watching the watching the Nats yesterday afternoon, I was in such a good humor <laughs> that... Uh, there you go. I, uh, anything would have pleased me last yeah. night, you know. It, it puts things in perspective. It does. It does. Um, I didn't, uh, I wasn't surprised at anything I saw. I've known Joe Biden for a long time. You saw Joe being Joe. I think Joe's mission was to uh, rev up his base and... You know, the guys in the union hall or, or whatever. I don't think you'll appeal to all of them, but uh, uh, whatever they think their base is, <clears throat> to be aggressive and overbearing and, you know, get some attaboy pats from uh, the uh, people they're dependent on on election day to get the vote out. And uh, Paul is uh, was just as, uh, as uh, uh, brilliant and uh, as calm and... Uh, uh, performed just as well as I, I thought he would, and uh, so I, I, I wasn't surprised at anything. I, I guess the thing I was just talking to Tori about this. I guess the thing that surprised me most is two things: how readily that Biden threw the intelligence community under, I, the, under shocked the bus, by that, yeah. and the other uh, uh, the other thing, saying that they were not notified that there were requests in for more security. Uh, that's just not true. Uh, it, everybody knows now that uh, the administration, when he says we, maybe he means, you know, people on his particular hall in the White House were not notified. Uh, you know, he's been, he was holed up for about a week in debate preparation. <laughs> so I don't know what he knew or didn't know. Right. But uh, the State Department surely knew. There was all kinds of communication. I don't know if they consider the State Department a part of, of we anymore. But it's just a, a misrepresentation, and it just, you know, slid on, and, and you know, nobody uh, questioned him on it. But. You know, you're right, though, about how quickly he threw the intelligence committee. It was an intelligence failure. You know, I have sources in the intelligence community who are telling me that they're furious at that because they feel like they were sending information up the chain, that it was getting to the right, that they were doing everything they could to tell people what was going on, but that it was they, their opinion that some of this intelligence they were getting was cherry-picked to fit a narrative that they wanted to tell. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's obvious to, to anybody. The intelligence community would not leap out there to, to, to tell them what it was not and then, and then guess wrong, you know, like um, by... by uh, um, a factor of, of, of a thousand uh, as, as to what actually happened. I, I don't believe that. That's the same intelligence community, by the way, that will tell Biden and Obama uh, exactly uh, what the, the, the mullahs are doing in Iran. And we'll know precisely the moment that they decide uh, when to go nuclear. You know, he said that, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we should. On one hand, he trusted them. Yeah, on the one hand, uh, they know everything. And on the other hand, they know nothing. Right. I was surprised that Martha Raddatz, who knows as much about national security and foreign policy and intel as anybody in town, didn't call the vice president on that one. She knew the facts. She knew what he was saying was wrong. And either he didn't get the information, why not, or he had the information and was lying about it. But in either case, that was an area where she could have said, hold on a second. Now, you know, you all can have your own opinions, but let's stick to the facts here. Well, that's that's an advantage that a person uh, like Joe has in a debate situation. There's so much to cover that you can make these broad, blustery uh, comments. Same thing was true when he went against Palin, by the way. He, right. made, he, he made several glaring errors that nobody ever ever caught him on because the narrative was, uh, you know, can, pa can Palin, you know, put two sentences together. Right. And, and that's all anybody was interested in. So that, that has to do with the format. 
So talk about Paul Ryan's performance. And you've watched him, you've known him and his staff for some time. What did you think when you saw him last oh, night? He, he, he did well. I think when I say perf- uh, when we when we talk about performance, and, and, and we all do, you know, that's uh, that's important, and that's what we look at. But but it it, it really uh, and it, it's a it's it's kind of a trained monkey scenario, you know, with these debates and all. And anybody that's been in politics, we've all done them and prepared for them, and you know, got your points down and and uh, and all of that. But I've been a follower of his for a long, long time, and I've never known of a of, of a of a young political uh, leader like him who not only had the ability, the acumen, to do what he has done and to be as smart as he is on the issues, but to have the guts. To step forward, we're yeah, not suffering. It's not in, easy to say some of these things, is it? No, we're not suffering in Washington from lack of uh, brain power, or lack of knowledge, or, or lack of people who can uh, who can uh, be clever in a debate situation. What we're lacking is guts, courage. and courage, and and people who are willing to tell the truth. We have the debate last night, you know, on all these issues and all these sub issues and sub sub issues and. And sitting in front of us there is the fact that we are going bankrupt. Medicare is going bankrupt. Social Security is going bankrupt. We cannot continue down this road. And amazingly, we've had so few political leaders who will acknowledge that simple fact. Right. And 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 that's again is 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 an advantage of somebody like Joe. Uh, you know, you can bluster your way through. You know, it's a combination of. Uh, of uh, you know the music man and the ice cream man, you know we got something here for everybody. You know, li- <laughs> listen, listen to us. Hollywood and, reference, everyone. And, Free uh, unicorns for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let, let me ask you this question because part of the reason for coming out here and doing the swing state road show every day, every Friday between now and the election, is to get a sense of what's going on in the Commonwealth. Because it, it really could be the deciding factor in this coming could election. Be. So you live here. You talk to people. You're in contact with folks in this area. What do you sense about what's happening in Virginia? Well, it's um, it's going to be very close. There's no question about it. I think that uh, it being so close to Washington gives the president a certain advantage because he's practically living uh, living out here, yeah, and, uh, and 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 spends an awful lot of time here. And uh, the Democrats have a lot at stake here. We've got their former chairman, you know, running for Senate here uh, and all that. Uh, So all I can say is that uh, it looks like after the last presidential debate that uh, there was a tipping point. I'm just going from the polls. I haven't talked to enough people to to know this, but uh, I think think that uh, Romney's got an edge here Something's happening. Well... Uh, Senator Fred Thompson, former U.S. Senator from Tennessee, former GOC, uh, GOP presidential candidate, and a Hollywood actor well known. It's good to have you here. Thank you, Thank sir. you so much Thanks for coming for by and by. spending my, time with us. My it. pleasure. Thank you. It's 845 on 105.9 FM.